Good morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning to receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your announcement sheet, I ask you to please take that out for some announcements here this morning. Following the service today, uh, just a brief mention, there's an LYF meeting. The youth are getting geared up for next month. We're heading to Bozeman, Montana for a Higher Things Conference. Just a real brief explanation. Imagine going to a college campus, uh, not for college classes, but for a week long of church classes and church services. There'll be approximately three to five church services a day, as well as teaching opportunities where they go to different classrooms to hear and to learn the Christian faith, and that'll be all week long. So they're doing some more planning for that coming up uh, in our meeting, their meeting here following the second service here today. As we look to the rest of the week here, a couple of things to mention. I will be out of town, and uh, not even out of town, but out of, out of state here for uh, about 11, 12 days. And so if any needs arise, uh, please contact Pastor Roth or contact the church office. Uh, Pastor Roth will be around the next two weeks here, uh, definitely available to meet any needs that uh, come your way. The women's Bible study with connection with that be no women's Bible study this week and next week. The men will still be meeting, so they have a couple articles they're going to go through on Wednesdays <clears throat> at 645. But with that in mind also too as well, just to mention this coming Wednesday will be an LYF Father's Day barbecue dinner. So dads come on out for a Father's Day barbecue dinner at 7 o'clock this Wednesday. On the very back of the bulletin, there's some other information, too. just want to draw attention to the new office hours for the summer, uh, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock throughout the summer months. There's been a uh, change in those office hours to bring you aware of as well. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed or overlooked this time that need to be mentioned? Very briefly, also mentioned to you, please fill out the blue book if you can at the end of the pew and pass it on down and return it back to its spot uh, if you are so willing and able to do that. Well, today is Trinity Sunday. You can tell with the change of the colors. We went from le red last week, which was Pentecost, to white this week, which is Trinity Sunday. And this is the one time of year where we dig out that old Athanasian Creed and we dust it off and we stand boldly and confess that Athanasian Creed. As we do that after the sermon here today, I will speak the odd numbers and you can speak the even numbers. Uh, but yet, nonetheless, we hear about how our Lord God is triune, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we'll confess that later on, as well as hearing more from our lessons pertaining to that. With all of that in mind, our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 507, hymn number 507.
Ask our so please stand as we turn to 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given a son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As they call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro, it printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. For salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Festival of Holy Trinity is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundation of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth, and he said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans, the 11th, tra- 11th chapter. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom of wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given him a gift that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there is a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one is ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Now 
Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 506, hymn number 506. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Nicodemus. Yeah, Nicodemus. He was no worthless bum. He was no slacker by any means. After all, he was a member of what was called the Great Jewish Sanhedrin. Yes, the Sanhedrin. Now, to fully understand the prestige and the importance of this Jewish Sanhedrin, we must understand that it was a great council of the nation. It's a great council of the nation, consisting of 71 men. And to be a part of this elite group of the Sanhedrin, one had to have a judicial experience that was above the average judge, as well as have an extensive knowledge of many languages, science, law, and history. Not only did they have to be well-educated and wise, but at the same time, they also had to be modest. They had to be, indeed, humble. And yet, at the same time, popular with the people. And so it was no small task to be on the high Jewish Sanhedrin. No small task indeed. Perhaps we could think of the Jewish Sanhedrin as equivalent to the same level as our Jew, or no, excuse me, our United States Supreme Court. Yes, on the same level as our United States Supreme Court. The Jewish Sanhedrin, they were indeed much like our Supreme Court, but actually, truth be told, they had a little bit more power. For example, besides making laws for the land, well, the Jewish Sanhedrin, they could crown a king. They could authorize war. They could appoint lesser courts with judges. So the point being, Nicodemus, yes, Nic Nicodemus himself was a big dog. He was a heavyweight. Or loosely stated, we could say he was the big cheese. He was the man. You get the picture. Now the reason why we must take time to understand Nicodemus and understand this context, to understand that he was no common slacker, is that it is essential for us to know this context in our reading from the Gospel of John as Jesus and Nicodemus encounter each other. In a reading from the Gospel of John, it would appear that both Jesus and Nicodemus were two people that were close to the kingdom of God. Indeed, two people close to the kingdom of God. As we've already stated, Nicodemus himself 
He was a member of the Jewish Sanhedrin. And Jesus, well, he was called rabbi. Now, the term rabbi is a word of esteem. It's like a word saying doctor of the church. And so it would appear that this was a mutual conversation among two established religious leaders who were in the kingdom of God. However, things are often not as they appear. In other words, you would think that Nicodemus would have been one of the few who could have seen the kingdom of God. You would think that out of all the religious people in that day and age, that Nicodemus would have been just one of those who could experience the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, though, things are not as they appear. See, dear friends, we have this problem with how we perceive the kingdom of God. Not only during that time, some 2,000 years ago, but also right now. We've always had this problem, even dating back to the time of Martin Luther in his day and age. We've always had this problem of how we perceive the kingdom of God. For example, we have this tendency to place nuns and monks and bishops and deacons and elders and district presidents and circuit visitors and pastors and so forth. Well, we place them up the top, right at the top, closest to God. Whereas, well, plumbers and retail workers, moms, farmers, lawyers, as well as obnoxious children, well, they're not so close to God after all. They're perhaps on the bottom. They're further down. We even do this with good works. We do this with good works as well. Keep in mind, all good works are good when they're done by faith and for one's neighbor. However, we have unfortunately made some works better than others. Tragically, we have made changing a diaper for a child or shoveling snow for a neighbor or taking out the trash somehow a lesser good work than going on a mission trip or perhaps even doing a good work within the walls of a church. Yeah, changing diapers and removing snow for a neighbor. Ah, that's second-class works. And so mark this, baptized saints, God is equally pleased with the nun running an orphanage as he is with the dad changing a dirty diaper. Good works happen inside the church and outside the church as well. Now the point being is this. The idea that some Christians are somehow closer to God than others is an actual foolish idea. It's a foolish idea. It needs to be purged from our minds. It needs to be eradicated from our teachings and our thoughts. This is, the reason, this is how the world thinks. This is how the world processes things. This is how the world indeed operates, not the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus tells Nicodemus that he needed to be born again. In other words, to see the kingdom of God, all the scrambling up the religious pecking order is, well, it's useless. Sure, the world insists on ranking, the world insists on grouping us in our little groups and positioning us against and towards each other, but not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God does not operate this way. And so with one swift assertion, Jesus, he basically tells Nicodemus that if he wants the kingdom of God, that he has to do it all over again. Think about that. He tells Nicodemus on the Sanhedrin that if he wants the kingdom of God, that he has to do it all over again. All that Nicodemus had accomplished, well, it actually means nothing. Indeed, it means nothing and contributes nothing to the kingdom of God. Nicodemus needed to be born anew, born from above. He needed to be reborn and made entirely a new creature itself, to be a new creature, to have the kingdom of God. You see, this is why the church really only cares about things such as baptism, absolution, and the Holy Supper. In Christ's church, there is no such thing as ranking each other or grouping each other or finding positions of power, some sort of pecking order in the church. Paul, he says it best. He says there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free. There's no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. In other words, our status, our sex, our ability, well, they do nothing. They do absolutely nothing for you and I to get closer to the kingdom of God. You and I, we cannot climb to the kingdom of God, for if we climb, we will never find the kingdom of God. Bluntly stated, we do not find the kingdom of God in the heights of our accomplishments. We do not find the kingdom of God in the clouds of our glory. 
We do not find the kingdom of God in the peaks of our popularity. For the kingdom of God is not above us. It's actually below us. Yes, it's right below us. You see, dear friends, Jesus, he flips everything upside down. He flipped it upside down for Nicodemus. And he does the same for you and for me. Listen up. As we know from Scripture, as Jesus teaches us, the greatest in the kingdom, the greatest in the kingdom of God are not the religious elites, but, you got it, little children, those little ankle biters, if you will, little babes, little micron. Unless we are changed to become like a micron, we will not have the kingdom of God, Jesus says. The greatest in the kingdom of God, well, it's not those who are first, but those who are last. If you want the kingdom of God, you are not to take up a list of goals and accomplishments, but, Jesus says, take up a cross and die. But there's a problem with all of this. And that is this, your sinful nature and mine as well. Our sinful nature does not like to hear this. Our sinful nature despises this message. You see, your sinful nature and my sinful nature, well, it likes to climb. Our sinful nature loves to climb. Our sinful nature is so easily seduced into trying to go up the pecking order to try to obtain the kingdom of God. And once our sinful nature has climbed just a little bit, well, our sinful nature demands that God stands and applauds us on our climbing. It demands that everyone else around us acknowledge our greatness on how far up we have climbed on the ladder to applaud us to the heights that we have achieved. Lord, have mercy on you and me too. Especially me. Dear friends, listen up. We must be born again, not once, and not even twice. But we must be born again every single week, every single day. And to be born again, or born from above, is not something that we must accomplish again and again by our own strength, by our own might, by our own climbing. But instead, like Nicodemus, to be born again is for us to be brought out of the heights of our glory all the way down to the reality that we are poor, miserable sinners in thought, word, and deed. And there, right there, with empty, beggarly hands, well, we are shoved right back into the reality of our baptisms. We are given God's good gifts of grace and mercy for us. Right there at the end of the line, right there at the end of our ropes, At the bottom of the pecking order, we are forgiven. We are absolved of all of our sins. And then we are scooped up. We are invited to his table with the strengthening of our faith and our love for our neighbor. Baptized saints, quite simply, you do not do something for Christ to earn the kingdom of God. But instead, Christ, well, he does something for you to give you the kingdom That is why you need to be born again, born from above every single day. And this happens as you are returned to the reality of your baptisms and repentance and faith. This happens as the Lord forgives you through his word of absolution. This happens as you are invited to receive at the Lord's altar. You are constantly being born again when the Lord snatches you out of your lofty sinful nature and drags you back down to the waters of your baptism and marks you and makes you anew again and again and again. And so because there's only one baptism, right? There's only one baptism, only one absolution, only one Holy Supper, because there's only one Christ. Well, get this, you are one with Nicodemus, one and the same. Yes, that is the reason why there's no such thing as boasting in the church. If we do boast, it is about Christ, but not about us. We can't boast. How can we? When there's nothing to boast of. Yes, that's the reason why there's no boast in the church. That's the reason why there's no comparing in the church. That's why there's no pecking order in the church. The ranks that we have in life, the jobs that we have, the skills that we have, well, they're not for us. They're to bless our neighbor. To serve our neighbor in love. To bless those around us. They're not for power, but they're for service. Because they cannot contribute to our eternal salvation. How can they earn the kingdom of God when we have already been born again in Christ and by Christ alone? Baptist saints, you have been born again, born from above through Christ. Yes, through Christ and by Christ and for Christ. You're brought into the kingdom of God through the word and sacraments. Therefore, get this, get this, hear this. 
you cannot get any closer to the kingdom of God than you are right now. Because you have his word poured in your ears. You've been absolved of your sins. And you are given his holy supper. Because in Christ, he's the way, he's the truth, and he's your life. In Christ, the kingdom comes all the way down to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Ask the congregation to please stand. With one heart and one voice, we confess the holy faith as expressed in the words of the Athanasian Creed on page 319. I will confess the odd numbers and the congregation will respond with the even numbers. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will, without doubt, perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. And yet there are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, and the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three, three gods or lords. The Father is not made nor created by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated, above the trinity in unity and unity in trinity is to be worshiped therefore whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the trinity but it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our lord jesus christ therefore it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our lord jesus christ the son of god is at the same time both god and man he is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, 
rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. We continue with the prayers of the church printed on the inside of the bulletin. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed Father, you have suffered fully the cost of love through your Son. Give healing and peace to all the afflicted, the grieving, and the dying, especially those who have requested our prayers, including Brenda, Brittany, Jeremy, Brian, Kari, Carl, Charlotte, Daniel, Don, Fern, George, Isabella, Jameson, Jeff, Joellen, Callie, Karen, Manny, Marilyn, Mark, Pat, Philip, Randy, Robert, Roger, Ruth, Suzanne, Travis, Tracy. We also pray for Sandy and her family as they mourn the loss this week of Scott. Give them all that is needful that they may endure their illness confident of your presence. Supply them with grace sufficient for their every need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we poor sinners confess that in our flesh dwells no good thing. If we are left to ourselves, we will die in sin, since that which is born of flesh is flesh and cannot see the kingdom of God. Grant us, we implore you, your grace and mercy, and for the sake of Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to regenerate us, that we may firmly believe the forgiveness of sins according to your promise and baptism and daily, recre daily increase in Christian love and good works, until at last we obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our congregation may be seated for the offering music. As a way of reminder, the offering plate is at the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be mailed at the church office or conducted through the church website online. Ask our to please stand for the offertory on 781.
As we continue to the service of the sacrament on page 160, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Senate or one of our sister congregations, we do still invite you to please come forward to kneel at the rail and cross your arms to receive a blessing this morning. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service while well, membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the, whole, of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, us in your kingdom and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, and remember to me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
ask our nation to please stand as we thank the Lord on page 164. God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look with you, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Maybe say it for our departing hymn, hymn number eight oh two, hymn number eight oh two. It's good to see each and every one of you out this morning. As we heard today, we must be born again, or as technically the original language says, born from above. Yes, we must be born above as a gift given to us, so that as we are given this great gift, we are given the kingdom. You have Christ. You've been born from above. You have received the gospel this day. Rest in that kingdom that belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen.